What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I am so super stoked today to have you all here. How do you guys like the new studio? Does it work? Does it not work? Is it too dark? Is it too lit? Is it too... What? What do you mean, What's what do you mean it looks like a cartoon? Is it a cart... How's this? Is that better? Does that look a little less cartoony? Or maybe I'll go outside. There we go. City in the background, nice, beautiful, sunny day. How's this one? Does this work for you? I'm glad. I'm glad I can work this out for you. As you probably figured out, there's something a little bit different about today, and that is that we're using a green screen. Nothing you saw behind me is real. Well, it's, some of it's real, but none of it is where I really am. I'm sitting in my normal studio in front of a green screen because I want to talk to you guys about just how easy and how complicated it is to do green screen inside of LumaFusion 3.0. All right, let's start with the good news. The good news is once you're inside of LumaFusion, working in green screen is as simple as just a few clicks and you're done. The bad news is everything you have to do before you press record is a lot more complicated than any other video you can do. To give you an idea, this is my fourth time doing this because I couldn't get one very key, very powerful element, right? And that is the lighting. You have to light a green screen shot differently than any other shot. Now, normally I have my two softbox lights, one here, one here, or one actually over my head, one just 45 degrees off my face, and that's it. And everything else is easy peasy done, right? Because the room, I just set the background up and I keep it dark, but with a green screen, you have to light yourself on the room that you're gonna be in and then light your screen completely separate. You have to light it separately. You have, I had to take a steamer to it before I could shoot and actually I had to stop, re-steamer it and go again. And I have to be stepped out a few feet from the green screen. The reason for all of that is the same and that is that if there is even a slight shadow or change in color, it's going to really mess up your final product. Um, let's give you an idea. Let's turn this. And so now we have uneven lighting on the green screen. And so this is what it looks like with the uneven lighting. And now if I turn this light back around to where it was, we even the lighting back out. Can you see the difference? It may be subtle, it may be something that only a few people can see, or it may be huge, as in just a big spot over there. Now, there is one that you can see, and that is if I were to step back here, right next to it, and move my arms, I'm now casting a shadow behind me, and that shadow is going to be extremely visible. <clears throat> so the most important thing to know about shooting with a green screen is that your lighting has to be ideal. It doesn't have to be good. It doesn't have to be um, even great. It has to be ideal. It has to be almost perfect because every slight problem is going to show up massively. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, let's jump into LumaFusion. I'm going to show you how to do the post-production part and then we're done. It's a really simple and easy concept. So here we are back inside of LumaFusion. And as you see, I'm gonna go ahead and leave myself on the screen here, just so you can see just how well uh, green screen can be used in a tutorial setting. Um, but I also thought like, if you look, like what's more meta than doing a tutorial on how to do green screen while keeping myself on the screen because of a green screen, and at the same time working with the footage from the beginning of the tutorial on green screen. Wrap your mind around that inception level of uh, thought process. <laughs> so the first thing we have to do, this was shot in a log profile, so I have to go ahead and fix that and get it color corrected and color graded. So we're gonna correct it first. Uh, let's try log three. Log three is gonna get us pretty close to where we wanna do, and we're not gonna have to do a lot of grading with it. So I'm good with that. I'm gonna stick with that. I'm gonna throw on an original just because I want to pull some of those highlights out, maybe some of that shadow down a bit, and pull off on the saturation so my face is not quite so red 
and then we're gonna cool it a bit. We're cooling it a bit more. Look at the background and how that screen is now more green. That's gonna be important in just a second. So now that we've got that, our next step is we have to take this off of the main timeline. So we just literally just pick it up and drop it on our secondary timeline. This is a new feature within 3.0 as far as I can tell. I don't remember ever being able to pick something up and put it on the secondary timeline. And I think that's because they added this here where you can actually drop footage onto the secondary timeline. So it's a really good bonus. I'm really happy it's there. So let's go ahead and we're gonna drop in the office that I'm gonna start with that you've already seen if you've made it this far. And let's zoom this in just a bit so I can get a hold of that handle. What happened here? Hold on. We're going to zoom this in a bit and we're just going to pull this a little bit out that way, just enough so that I have something to hold on to and stretch this out to the full length of the video. All right, there we go. We are looking pretty good. Now you can't see the uh, office behind me yet, and that's because we haven't done the most important step. So what a green screen does in essence is it cuts out anything in this image that's green to show you what's underneath it. It puts a hole in the footage, basically. So that's what we need to do, and that's why you had to put your main clip on the top, on the secondary timeline, so that, remember, like I said before, this is our uh, playhead is looking down through the timeline, so we need to get what's here while keeping this on top. So what we have to do is we go back into the footage and go into your edit screen and we're gonna stay in color and effects, which by the way, guys, I'm about to do a really cool video on color grading using uh, pre-made LUTs. Like I said, the Canon Log 3 did pretty good with this footage, but it doesn't always. So if you're interested, hit the subscribe button because my next video is gonna be showing you how to create a LUT in an application for free or also in an application that's paid and use that to really clean up and really, really speed up your color grading. But for this, since we're here, let's go ahead and over here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use what's called a green screen key. And that's really, anytime you're taking something out, you're keying it out. So the folks at LumaFusion and in their infinite wisdom have made, have put all the green screen, blue screen, sky, ocean keys, behind a keyhole. So you click the one that looks like a keyhole, and as you see, you have your blue sky, your blue screen, your ocean, your light luma, your dark luma, and the one we want, the green screen, and there we go. Right off the bat, it looks okay. It's not great, it's not perfect. You, If you look down here, you can see some, some pretty sketchy parts. Those are difference in lighting, certain things like that. But remember I said I was really doing the color grading based on getting a specific color here. And I wanted to get that color as close to this one as possible because that is what color is actually being keyed out. But I didn't hit it dead on. So we got to make some little adjustments. Now I can do it manually here, one at a time, back and forth. You know, I can really adjust the saturation, adjust the hue range, things like that. But the first thing you wanna do is you wanna click on your eyedropper here, and then that's gonna put this box in the center, and you put that on a one of the darker parts of your green screen, and there you go. That took out a lot of that problem that we had, and it's made, it's taken a lot of the steps out. It's made this so much easier for me to do. So now I can do the saturation range, and my brightness range. And really what I'm looking at right now is the edges. And I want the edges to kind of come in as much as possible. So 
you know, you can do your edge blur a bit. It's going to blur out the edges some. Not exactly what I want to do just yet, but you can pull the erosion distance up a little bit. So that's, I'm going to lose some of my hair at the top, but it does keep everything else pretty nicely in there. And yes, this is a pretty good start. And of course you play with your hue ranges because even this, remember we did the darkest spot on our green screen. We didn't do the brightest. And even if, and, it, and as we saw, it wasn't perfectly evenly lit no matter how hard we tried. So you are going to have some issues up around my hair, but for the most part, this is a pretty, pretty good uh, setup here. Now, I want to take into, I want you to take into consideration also when you're doing your lighting, that you keep in mind what the lighting is of the picture that's going behind you. So I'm lit pretty evenly here, but I'm lit at a specific uh, light level. So if this were to be like a really dark room, it's going to be very, very hard for me to get my face to, to really fit in there. Even here, I'm not lit perfectly with this room. I'm going to have to do some adjustments. I mean, I have to do some adjustments anyway. So let's go into the room first and let's see what we can do here in frame and fit to try to get a little bit more realistic look to this. I'm gonna stretch it out a bit on the sides and then bring the size down just a tad bit. And maybe come up a little bit or down. That looks okay. Again, not perfect, but we're not going for perfect for the tutorial. I wanna to try to keep this as short as possible for you. I just wanna get a pretty good look now I can do it like this. Anyway, now I, I still don't like it. You see, it, it looks fake. It looks like I'm set off to the side. So if that ever happens, then you again, you just go back into your, your room and you just adjust the room around a little bit. You can bring it up and maybe come down as if I'm standing up higher. How's that look? That's looking pretty good. I mean, it looks more realistic like I'm really standing in there. You have a light coming from here, which is creating a light source on my face. It doesn't help that the ring light is showing up in my glasses, but that wasn't really, I'm, I was using my main lights here to light the screen. So I had to improvise a light for my face. I can go back in now into the color and effects on me and kind of play around with that a little bit, pull some of the brightness down, kind of make me match the room saturation. Or I could do the opposite. I could go into the picture of the room and I could go into color effects on here and I can you know, cool this or warm it up, make it match. There you see, add a little warmth to it. Pull a little bit of saturation out of there or add saturation and vibrance to it. Just be mindful that you are going to be, you're working with a picture, so Please be mindful when you're doing that, that as you see, there's some artifacts that are now showing up behind the lighting. Okay, and then we run it and it looks pretty decent. We can do a little bit here, add a little blur to the background, just make sure it's not like over the top. You know, you want it to look like the background of a photo. You don't want everything to be like perfectly in focus, but you don't want everything to be out of control, out of focus either. And I think that's going to do a pretty good job. Oh, look at that problem. Do you guys see this? I was too close to the camera at this point. 
And because of that, looky there, the top of my head is cut off. So with that being a problem, if you want to keep the look right, I'm going to have to go back to frame and fit and size this back up so that the top of my head is there. That is an interesting problem. Because what I have all because I wasn't paying attention to my surroundings, but it does actually, it's not bad to have it like this. And now let's run it through, see what it looks like. Come on, better. Okay, it does make it look a little less realistic. And again, now, look, my arm gets cut off. So these are the things you have to keep in mind. This was not a perfect setup. And I'm actually going to leave it that way because I want you guys to see what happens when you're not paying attention well enough. And you, I have a very small space I'm working with, so it's not ideal for green screen. But I did want to show you guys a little bit about it. So this is the best I'm going to get on this. I'm going to play around with it before I post this video. But hopefully you got something out of it. If so, hit the subscribe button. If you do want to do a little bit more in-depth into um, color grading, I do have a video I just did on color grading. Go check that out. It's really in intuitive, really in-depth, kind of slow but it's worth it because I'm trying to give you as much information as possible. So until the next video, guys, thank you for coming. Stay safe, stay healthy, God bless, and just keep editing. I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.